When I was tearing through my first ever run of Blade Assault, I thought to myself, you know, this would be an amazing first roguelite for someone. It's fast paced, it allows you to get powerful quickly, you can get pretty far off the get go, I got through 3 stages and 1 boss in that first run. There's no dynamically evolving story, it's pretty cut and dry, it just seems stripped down to the essentials and gives you all the tools you need to succeed early. And then I thought about it a bit more and I realized, as true as all of that was, this might be a tough game to wrap your head around if you're new to the genre just because of the abundance of meta progression and unique gameplay mechanics that I picked up on through being a fan of roguelites prior to this. And following that thought, I had a bit of an epiphany. Blade Assault is not an entry-level roguelite. It's the genre's final boss, so... Let's talk about it. Blade Assault is a game that's been in early access for about 7 months and is releasing in its official 1.0 state today, January 17th. Let's hope that I hit that day with this review, otherwise that line is going to age really poorly. My review is obviously based on the early access build of the game, which means the full release will include plenty of extra stuff that I haven't experienced, including but not limited to a new section of the skill tree, at least one new playable character, new weapons, new chapters, and the true ending. Despite that, most of the information that you'll need to know about the core of this game can be found here. With that said, Blade Assault is Dead Cells. With a chainsaw! But it's also not really, because it's also Risk of Rain, Hades, and to a lesser degree, basically every other game in this genre rolled into one, and you might be thinking, what does that mean? These are all really different games, some of which seem pretty far removed from how the game on my screen looks like right now, aside from potentially the roguelike mechanics. So is it really all of these games rolled into one, or does it just share the same traits that every game in this genre has? And first off, damn, that was a long question, take a breather, simplify your ideas please, and second, to answer that fully, I need to talk about the many, many elements of this game's progression. Gameplay-wise, Blade Assault is a 2D action side-scroller with a handful of characters and weapons. The core of its gameplay revolves around a basic attack, a skill attack, a dash, a double jump, a sub-weapon, a hyper-core ability, and a skill assigned to your left bumper. I'm gonna use the chainsaw weapon, the first one that you unlock, as an example to dive a little bit deeper into the gameplay. The chainsaw allows you to pull off quick melee moves with the basic attack, and if you can find space to breathe, it also lets you rev it up if you hold the attack button, and doing so buffs your attacks for a limited time. The default skill attack turns you into a spinning blade of death that leaps into a short arc through the air, doing damage to anything in its path, but critically not granting you iframes, meaning it's not entirely overpowered. All skill attacks have a short cooldown and cost a certain amount of energy, which is represented by this bar and is built up through doing damage with your basic attack. The low cost and the low cooldown rate, which can be made even shorter or cheaper through miscellaneous upgrades, mean that you don't have to be stingy with your skill moves. In other words, you can pull off decently high damage attacks fairly frequently. Your default sub-weapon with this character, which persists no matter which of his weapons you're using, is a little plasma shooter thing. It's not incredibly high damage, although it does cool off pretty fast, but thankfully you're able to make major upgrades to this weapon pretty quickly every run, and it usually becomes your best friend in tight situations. Your hypercore and left bumper abilities can be one of many things, and they do high damage, but they also have no default. As far as barebones combat goes, it's not too intense or complicated, but it works. Basic attacks feel fairly fairly powerful and quick, especially with the chainsaw, and the skill and sub-weapon can help you deal a little extra damage with unique looking attacks. But the real fun comes with the frequent upgrades and the alternate movesets, as it usually does in this genre of game. Blade Assault has a metric ass load of run progression and meta progression, which can be seen through just how many currencies the game has. Let's start off with the upgrades that boost your current run, and only your current run. The game structure is pretty simple and immediately familiar to anyone who's played Hades. You go through a short level containing plenty of enemies, you kill them all, and then at the end you're granted an upgrade or currency, after which you choose between one of two doors which will lead you to another room much like this one. Each room's respective rewards are shown at the top, meaning you're able to decide which of the two rewards suit your fancy more, and once you reach the reward of a given room, if it's a currency you just snag it up and move on, but if it's an upgrade you get three options to choose from. Currencies include roses, gems, coins, and chips, and I'll dive into what those mean a bit later, and upgrades come in the ice, lightning, fire, and health variety. Picking up these upgrades can entirely transform your build, giving you the ability to apply elemental effects to your weapon like Chain Lightning, again see Hades as inspiration, gaining access to better sub-weapons like the Flamethrower, acquiring hypercores that either let you dish out crazy damage or encase yourself in ice and heal a bit, gaining attack properties on your dash, or just taking less damage and doing more. These upgrades can create killer combinations, like this one where I was using the axe weapon and lightningified my axe throwing skill, leading to me absolutely melting everyone that 
came in contact with it. One of my only complaints though comes with this part of the game. As amazing as upgrading your character is, the randomization seems to be super off with the room rewards. I had so many runs in a row where the only thing offered to me were upgrades as in exclusively a choice between one upgrade or another, that when I had a run that gave me the option between two currencies, I was taken aback. I'd entirely forgotten that those were even offered, and even weirder than that was the whole first chapter of that run only offered me currency rewards, no upgrades. The balancing here is a bit funky, and hopefully they address that with the 1.0 release. Destroying objects throughout the game and killing enemies grants you gems, which can be used to open chests that are scattered throughout every level, or to purchase key items or benefits from various characters that show up at the tail end of each stage. Minor helpful buffs or upgrades are contained in the chest, like this one that gives you a chance to inflict the bleeding status on an enemy, or this one which can give you a little extra health once in a while. Spending gems on these chests is usually a good idea, but it's also good to save up a decent amount for the characters that appear at the end of stages. At the end of the first half of a chapter, of which there are currently four in the early access build, you can purchase food from Max which restores some health and gives you a couple of buffs, you can buy a randomized item from the vending machine multiple times if you want, and you get to choose between calling Sophia and calling Honk. Sophia's stock includes plenty of items that have some really enticing buffs but come with a caveat that's less appealing, and you're able to pay a few gems to restock the selections if they aren't to your liking, similar to the shops in Dead Cells. My favorite item here so far has been the item that halves your max health but lets you gain 4 max health upon killing an elite enemy. Getting this early on means you're usually not in too much danger of dying with half of your max health, and you can really inflate that max health by the end of the run a lot more than you can usually do through conventional methods. If you instead decide to call Honk, his shop also offers restocks and focuses more on simply improving your offense or defense in significant ways. Those are all the halfway through the chapter characters, and meanwhile, the end of chapter characters, which appear after you defeat a boss, offer things like the ability to restore some health and reduce your danger for a set fee. And there's also the ability to buy stuff from a vending machine once again, and also level up your current upgrades and abilities in order to make their effects more potent. If you're wondering what danger level is, by the way, it's where the main risk of rain influences come from in this game. That series of games has a mechanic wherein the more time is passed in a certain run, the harder it gets, making you balance between exploring levels for more upgrades and money, and rushing through levels to keep the difficulty low. Blade Assault's play on this is a little bit more palatable for anyone who found that system stressful in those games. Here the difficulty meter is not fluid, nor is it constantly increasing. At the end of every room, the final enemy encounter is activated through this port, and the enemies you fight here are buffed. It's only during this time that your danger level increases, and it stops ticking upwards the second that this batch of enemies is defeated. The negative effects of the increasing danger level are only felt when the bar reaches all the way through and resets to the beginning, tacking on a new skull above the bar. These skulls represent your actual danger level, and each one applies some kind of menacing effect, like bosses having more health or more powerful enemies appearing throughout. The mechanic is a great thing to pull from Risk of Rain and mold it a little to suit this game better. And I like the expansion of this idea through a character that can lower your level for a fee, as well as the danger chests, billboards, and health stations which give you good items, food from Max's shop, or a massive surge of health respectively, but at the cost of there being a 70% chance that your danger level moves up by one. These are always given before boss fights, so if you're in a pinch, you'll always have a fair shot against the boss, as long as you're willing to potentially make the game a bit harder for a while before you can reduce the level after the boss. And overall, the system is a clever way to encourage fighting quickly, but not rushing through the whole game, and also while having some safety nets involved. There's actually one more character that gives upgrades at the end of chapters, Hank, but he doesn't take gems, he takes roses. His upgrades improve your weapons significantly, like giving your chainsaw attacks the ability to spawn damage dealing spinning axes, or changing your blade arcing skill move into straight up Sonic. Like you can just sprint back and forth through enemies in this little blade ball, it's awesome. This character also has a chance of appearing randomly at the end of a room, so you can access these upgrades a bit more frequently. All in all, combined with the upgrades that you can get from normal rooms, the amount of ways you can become uniquely powerful with every run is ridiculously high. And it really passes the mark of what makes a great roguelite in my opinion, which is not only that it feels like every run is a new gameplay experience that's equally as fun as the last, but every single run has that one upgrade that you hope you get next time because it's just so powerful. When you end a certain run and you're sad because you don't think you'll ever get that OP again, and then it turns out you become even more powerful in the next run and you go through that same cycle over and over, eventually it hits you that the game has just done an amazing job at letting you feel powerful at all times in unique ways, and that's exactly what you want. We're not done yet though, there's tons of progression outside of the current runs as well. Coins let you unlock new weapons, and they also let you buy starting versions of some of Hank's upgrades from the very beginning of the run. They're also also used to purchase skills from a skill tree that's getting expanded in the 1.0 release, and they're also 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 used to buy an item
item to boost your run from the starting area. As if that wasn't enough, chips allow you to upgrade the passive effects of weapons, yet another way that run variation is increased, and yet another nod to Hades systems. And cubes can be used to lower the cost of items from characters, making it easier to get more items and benefits every run. Oh, and did I mention there's other characters available here that you can also purchase with these cubes who have entirely different playstyles? Currently, the two other characters include one that plays a lot more like a ninja with shurikens and a chain sickle that lets her pull enemies towards her, complete with a unique elemental type called Toxic which does damage over time and is incredibly powerful, and another character that has a wide melee arc and attacks with her sword while dashing, doing some pretty hefty damage, and fun fact, this is actually the character that I first beat the game with. The three current weapons for your main character alongside the other two characters are being expanded with 1.0, but even now with how many upgrades and abilities there are currently, especially ones that entirely transform what your weapons and skills do, the game winds up with a great variety, and even weapons that I didn't like at first, like the axe and the gun, actually got some insane upgrades going forwards. It's pretty telling that my least favorite weapon initially actually got me easily past the third of four bosses in just my second run with that weapon after I was stuck on that boss for a couple of runs. I know I spent 90% of this review discussing the progression and what it means, but that's because this is the most roguelite roguelite I've maybe ever played. It does wear its inspirations proudly on its sleeve, but I think that's fine as long as you come out with an end product that's more than just a smush of other games. And even though the game takes so many mechanics from its contemporaries, as well as sharing other broad similarities to those same games that we mentioned before, like the 2D side-scroller nature of Dead Cells or the frenetic action of Hades that feels almost button mashy but is still purposeful, or the risk of rain-like upgrade stacking that lets you become ridiculously overpowered, it still feels like its own game. It doesn't just owe everything it has to those other titles. The fun in this game comes almost entirely from the simple, satisfying gameplay loop that's enhanced through the dozens of options offered during and in between every run that keeps things consistently fresh throughout. Do I have some complaints? Sure. I mentioned the weird randomization, but I'd say there's also the very basic story that's not incredibly gripping. I can see myself getting tired of having only three options for elemental upgrades compared to something like Hades, which boasts plenty more. And the bosses aren't anything to write home about. They aren't bad, but they're pretty basic and don't have any memorable soundtracks assigned to them. There's also the minor issue of some of the translation errors, especially with the menuing, that don't ruin anything by any means, but they're occasionally noticeable. But honestly, at the end of the day, Blade Assault feels like a love letter to action roguelite fans and serves up an incredibly enjoyable gameplay experience that hooked me instantly and has me itching for more every day. If you've ever liked a game in this genre, I think there's a good chance that you'll have an amazing time with Blade Assault. Subscribe if you're new, like the video if you enjoyed it. This somehow took one hour to record despite being a 10 minute video. I'll see you guys next time. Peace.